This episode is brought to you by the American Homebrewers Association, host of Homebrew Con Online, a virtual gathering of homebrewers happening this June 18th through the 20th. With an all star lineup of speakers, Homebrew Con Online is an opportunity to enhance your brewing skills and knowledge, all from the comfort of your own home. Tune in for live seminars, demonstrations, virtual expos, meetups, and happy hours. Learn more and register at homebrewcon.org. That's homebrewcon.org. Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, June 11th, 2020. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. This week, we visit Bentonville Brewing Company in their new home. After spending time in a temporary space in Rogers, Arkansas, Bentonville Brewing is in a brand new building in their hometown with not only an expanded brewing capacity, but an outside beer garden tailored for physical distancing. If you go to basicbrewing.com, you can find archives of our audio and video shows. And if you go to basicbrewingshop.com, you can find our DVDs, our brewer's logbooks, and other basic brewing gear. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Basic Brewing and find our show page on Facebook as well. We have a cool Basic Brewing app on iTunes and Amazon.com, and we're found all over the place where fine podcasts are served up. If you want to support us financially, check out Patreon.com slash Basic Brewing. And thanks to everybody who's helping out in that way. If you go to Patreon.com slash Basic Brewing, you can see a long list of stuff that you can access if you sign up as a supporter. Patreon supporters have already seen the episode that uh, Steve and I shot about my 15-minute Hollertau Blanc cream ale. That's a tasty beer. Or at least it was a tasty beer. It's not. <laughs> it is no more. <laughs> it has gone to meet its maker. <laughs> the uh, general. Literally, I made it. And it <laughs> oh, the general public will get to see that episode on the uh, Hollertau Blanc Cream Ale this uh, coming Friday. Next up in the video lineup is my small batch brew in a bag, Captinus. Many thanks to everybody who is uh, pitching in to support uh, Basic Brewing these days. Um, uh, just a note, uh, by the time you hear this, uh, the uh, uh, the Basic Brewing openers on our store site uh, may be no more as well uh, because um, I went to reorder and the company that I got them from is uh, not, they, they, they're they gone. Pushing up the daisies, I guess. I don't know. So anyway, I've got to solve that situation. So just just so as you know, I hope you're remaining safe and healthy. I am uh, occupying my time working on uh, future content for the shows, of course, uh, and with help from uh, listeners. Uh, uh, we've uh, we got a couple of d- double whammy, or we get, we got a sort of a uh, we got a double whammy this year. I, I usually take June off, but you know that's not happening, and I'm fine with that. Uh, and then we usually get a couple months worth of audio shows by going to HomebrewCon and talking to people in person, uh, which helps out quite a bit, uh, filling the yawning chasm of content that I have to fill every week. Uh, I am looking forward to a HomebrewCon online uh, next week, though. Um, I, I brewed up the uh, next hop sampler uh, this week. On this one, I'm taking a different approach using two hops that we've tasted before, and no, one is not lemon drop. I'm, <laughs> I'm brewing each by itself, and then I'm brewing a third batch that's a blend of the two. So stay tuned for details on that. I'm very excited about that. I also brewed up a, a big old triple, or at least that's uh, what I'm calling it, 12 pounds or 5.4 kilograms of Pilsner malt, 2 pounds or 900 grams of wheat malt, and a pound or 950 grams of light candy syrup, uh, Czech Saz and Horizon for bittering. It's a big beer with a starting gravity of a 1068. Uh, that's big for me nowadays anyway. And I fermented it with B64 Napoleon from our friends and sponsors at Imperial Organic Yeast. Now, Imperial describes Napoleon as a, a classic strain to produce French Saison where a balance of fruit esters and spicy phenols are necessary. So it may be technically out of style for a triple, but I'm telling you, this beer is mighty delicious. (laughs) It's got a nice base bitterness and a a bit of sweetness, despite finishing it at 10.04. 
that Napoleon just ripped through those sugars. 8.5% ABV, deceptively drinkable with, with uh, uh, fruit notes, uh, spice, a teeny bit of bubble gum, and a little bit of banana. Did I use a starter? No, I did not. My, as I like to say, my stir plate is dusty because I don't make starters anymore for moderate gravity five-gallon batches because of imperial organic yeast. And uh, even this one, which is a bit big, I didn't use a starter. I got a YouTube comment uh, on our No Chill Belgian Golden Ale episode where I used B45 Gnome. Chris on YouTube said, I noticed you didn't use a starter but still got the ABV down very impressively. I've rarely had that kind of success with liquid yeast, even on smaller beers. You got any tips or suggestions on liquid yeast management? Well, I responded, buy Imperial Organic Yeast. Problem solved. <laughs> it may sound snarky, but it's pretty simple. Imperial has the highest pitch rate of any liquid, liquid yeast manufacturer at 200 billion cells. Every brewer I've talked to who has used Imperial loves it. Check them out at imperialyeast.com and ask your local homebrew shop for Imperial Organic Yeast. Let's take a quick look into the mailbag. You may remember Jacob, who had the issue with the Pilsner that uh, had a seemingly never-ending fermentation uh, after an extended mash time. Well, Jacob sent an update on that beer. Jacob says, uh, ended up slowing down and stopping at 1.002 final gravity. Bottled it and gave it two weeks to carb up. Got to try a bottle. Finally, after two months on and off fermentation and waiting, Jacob says it was a really tasty and hoppy pilsner. The long mash gave me a very nice dry beer. However, the long fermentation time and lack of predictability with the method, I don't think I'll give it another try. To try and achieve the same effect in less time, Jacob says, I was going to use your Pilsner method of adding rice to boost the fermentility or ferment, fermentability. I swear I haven't been drinking. With a more normal 60 or 90 minute mash time. I blame the coffee. Thanks for the update, Jacob. I'm, I'm glad the beer finally got done. Super dry, but uh, sounds tasty. And I'd love to hear what you think of adding rice to the mash. Hey, if you're looking for a way to uh, order ingredients for your next brew while you're sheltering at home, check out our, our the Build Your Own, not our, the Build Your Own beer page from our friends and sponsors, Desiree and Dave, from HighGravityBrew.com. The build, I wish I could take credit for it. It's really cool. The Build Your Own beer page has literally whatever you need ingredient-wise to brew delicious beers. You'll be amazed and impressed with a variety of base malts, specialty grains, adjuncts, hops, yeast, and more that HighGravityBrew.com has online. And with the Build Your Own Beer page, as you add ingredients to your cart, the total stays visible down at the bottom of the window all the time so that you can stay within your budget. While you're on HighGravityBrew.com, check out the Build Your Own Brew Kettle and the Build Your Own Brewing System features to help you move into electric brewing in a customizable way, in the, exactly the way that you want to go. Or, if you're like me and you need help with the specifics in building a system, you can choose a turnkey Warthog system or an electric system from other, uh, other manufacturers too. From five gallons to two barrels, whether you're a single, dual, or three-vessel brewer, HighGravityBrew.com has what you need to take the pain out of propane. And if you use the promo code EBC75BB, you can save 75 bucks off your electric brewing purchase. You know Desiree and Dave. They're great folks. Give, uh, give them a visit. That family owned and operated HighGravityBrew.com. Okay, a few years ago, uh, I visited with Katie and Bo Boykin at Bentonville Brewing. They had a really cool tap room and some tasty beers. Uh, but the brewing space out back was a little, it's a bit small. Luckily, they had some ambitions and a good plan because now they're in a big, beautiful new location. Katie Boinkin, welcome back to Basic Brewing Radio. Happy to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Who you got with you? Introduce your friends. Yes, so I have Steve, our director of tap room operations, Steve Goodman, and then Chris Hills, our brewer. 
And we are in a we are in a new place somewhere now. The first time you you say it was like. How many years ago? Five years ago? Four years? I it's think we first chatted at the tap room within our first year of being open, and we've been open for five years. So, I think I think it's a nickel. It's a <laughs> well, however long it's it's been a long time, and a lot has changed since uh, we uh, last talked. Uh, we were in a a really cool little tap room, and the brewing space out back was cramped let's say (laughs) Uh, but then you guys you guys made a move before the latest move talk about that yes so we moved um, after two years in that original tap room on fifth street in bentonville we moved to ozark beer company's original location in rogers so we were there for three years while we were building this place that we're currently in. So you were Bentonville Brewing in Rogers, Arkansas. Yeah, we sure were. (laughs) (laughs) But it worked out. It did. It did. We, um, unfortunately, our five-year lease at that original spot got cut short. um, So we had to scramble, figure figure out where we were going to go. Real estate in Bentonville is not readily available for large spaces at an excellent price. Um, so we jumped on the opportunity to move into Ozark's old space because they already had a floor drain. They already had the plumbing in place. And the original plan was that that space was only going to be our home for a year. But we had made um, some plan changes along the way that extended that stay a lot longer than it was planned. So we got to explain the whole Bentonville Brewing and Rogers thing a lot. <laughs> But here we are in uh, in a magnificent uh, facility, from the looks of it. So talk about this place. Well, it's been a long time coming, but we have upgraded our entire system, um, gotten much more space, and uh, we have a lot of room to grow here. I'm going to let Chris talk a little bit about our brew system, because he gets to use it all the time, <laughs> and the difference between our old system and the new system. And Chris, uh, talk about how you came on board and when you came on board as well. So I came on, was that May of 2017? It was right after we moved into the, or you guys moved into the old location, the previous location. <laughs> so that's, yeah, joined on then. Um, I've been brewing at another brewery for two years before that. So, so you, you've stepped up. Uh, this new system is uh, pretty big, as, as far as uh, as far as or, or is from what I've heard. Compared to the last system, yeah, going up from uh, it was a seven barrel, two vessel system. Now we're on the three vessel, twenty barrel. It's all steam now instead of before it was direct to fire or direct fire. Um, I've worked on a twenty barrel system previously, so it's kind of back to my. <laughs> it feels more natural to me. So there wasn't that that much of a big adjustment going going big again. No, not not too much. It's different controls for sure, but <laughs> it's it's nicer than the previous twenty barrel system I worked on. <laughs> so let's we've got we've got some beers in front of us here, uh, or I've got some beers in front of me. We're doing, and I, I have to say that we're doing this. We're social distancing here. I'm way down the table from you guys, <laughs> uh, and uh, this is the first time that we've used this little setup that I've got. We've each got our own microphones. Uh, so ju- should I start uh, by sampling a beer uh, while we while we talk, and then uh, Steve, which one should I start with? I'd definitely start with the uh, Kolsch first. Would that be that one? Yeah, and 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 uh, Chris could probably tell you what's significantly different about this Kolsch from uh, the cultures that we've done in the past. We filtered it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot clearer. Mm. It's, it's, it's crisper, cleaner, brighter. Um, it's just, in my opinion, the best cultures that we've put out. Wow, that's really good. I've always been a fan of your Kolsch, uh from Kolsch style. Oh, is there? What's the, what's what's the difference? But we're not in Cologne, Germany. Uh, okay, it's like sparkling wine versus champagne. It's, yeah, somewhat. Okay. Yeah. okay. We have had Germans in here. 
school <laughs> us on that. So we want to be respectful. Did they did they quiz you on the Rhine Heights go boat while they were here? Or? <laughs> well, you know, they're not here in America to drink those types of beers typically. But we've had com- we've had uh, compliments on it. But but yes, we want to make sure that it's a uh, you know we say style, and the TTB makes us do that too. Oh, oh okay. So what goes into this Kolsch? Kolsch style. A lot of love. Wow. <laughs> I was say something similar. <laughs> I decided against it. <laughs> Otherwise, it's well, mostly just uh, your basic Pilsner malt and uh, some wheat added to it. Touch of that. Mm. It's, it's all in the yeast, though. <laughs> yeah, and I guess it's, it is the Kolsch yeast or the Kolsch mm-hmm. style yeast. Gives that real quintessential flavor that it comes through. What's the uh, what's the fermentation like, or what temperature do you uh, try to manage with the fermentation? Um, so we go pretty much at a pretty normal, I guess, uh, ale fermentation. So we start off around so 65 mid range, and then uh, yeah, we just kind of treat it like any normal ale mm. in that sense. We don't do anything crazy with it. Just a matter of trying to get it to drop out at super heavily flocculating yeast. <laughs> but then you filter, so. And then we filter. That helps a lot. <laughs> Cuts down a lot of the, the time that it's in the tank now. This is just like a great introduction to people that might be just getting into like the craft beer world. We, we have a lot of people in this facility since we've opened. They're like, I've never had craft beer before. Mm. Um, and you, you think, like just being in the world, you're like, you haven't had craft beer. We have people ordering, you know, the big names like, Say, hey, can I get a Bud Light, Michelob, and we're like, hey, well, how about you try the Kolsch? And that's like a good lead-in. It's uh, and people seem to really initially like it. Yeah, uh, it's so. very nice. It's very grainy, uh, and it's got a lot more character than say, you know, uh, you know, Michelob uh, Light or something like that that people are, are used to. Um, and we we got to say that we're in the back of the uh, brewery here, and think things are working. They're actually working here, so <laughs> you might hear some background noises. Um, got our new Skyjack in. Oh, the, it's the new Skyjack. So, uh, so Katie, talk about the rest of the. I mean, we've got a big old brew house now, but but the facility surrounding it is pretty incredible. Yes. So that was one of the reason for the extension, or the how much longer it took than we originally planned to get here. It was worth the wait. Um, in addition to having a lot more space in our brewery and um, a lot of storage space. We planned for what we like to call like a food truck indoors. So we have a very small kitchen space that we sublet out to the um, the, the Berg der Guster pub. <laughs> but they're um, brought to you by the folks who do Tuscan Trotter. So it's like oh. German style with a high south flair. But we've worked with them to create a menu that works really good with our beer. And they use our beer with some of the food items and then we try to keep a nice price point so that people can have you know snacks and stuff while they're here there's also a really large outdoor beer garden Mm -hmm. and covered patio the covered patio is not the really large part the outdoor beer garden part is Um, inside the beer garden we have a kids pump track with stride bikes so kids can come and hang out with their parents while they're Spending time with friends and family here. Um, uh, the border of the beer garden is a dog run, so it's completely fenced in, so you can bring your fur babies with you. And there's room for three food trucks along the east side of the beer garden. So there will be lots more food options than just Derberg. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just a bigger picture of what's to come. I mean, our neighbors are the climbing gym, so we have a lot of climbers in here all the time and people who, you know, are active and biking and coming in and out, having beers before or after their workouts. And then the city of Bentonville or, well, there's a huge park system being developed behind Mm -hmm. us. So they're expanding Lake Bentonville back there, and they're working on a trail system through the wetlands. So in a few years when this whole project is complete this area will be our our brewery and the climbing gym will be kind of central in the patchwork of parks that they're trying to build in bentonville so 
long term, this is a pretty good spot for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. But they're also building the 100-acre park at 8th and I Street, which is maybe a quarter mile from here as well, wow. where that's supposed to connect all the bike trails as well. So we'll be kind of nestled in between two kind of, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Hubs? Des- destination right. parks are what they're calling it. So we'll be nestled into two destination parks. And then Northwest Arkansas is all connected with 37 miles of, of bike trails and walking trails and all that kind of stuff. So you guys are hooked up, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a really nice place. And especially now, the outside has been really awesome because with all the regulations we're under, even though we want to open, we want to open while everyone, our, our staff and our customers, feel super safe being here. So most of the time the tap room itself looks pretty empty but the but the tables outside are are pretty full we've spaced everything out um the way that the state has asked us to and we've been following all the regulations but because of that outside space people feel who people who might not normally feel comfortable coming out at this time feel a little bit better about it uh, because they're not enclosed in a small area with people yeah i want to i want to talk about that but uh, we should probably pace ourselves with the beers here. So, oh. we, so which which one should I go t- to next? Hills and Hollers, probably. This one? I uh, know. So it's the one to the left. The little. The, I'm sorry. To my left. <laughs> 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 Everything's from my perspective. That's Kate. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's our newest. Be- it was actually the first beer that was brewed here. Um, and mm-hmm. uh, maybe Chris can talk a little bit about that. Yeah. What do we have, Chris? So it's our. Uh, it's- kind of a take i guess on an english lager um it's kind of more of an evolved state of a previous beer we used to have which mm. was the city slicker amber which was an ale and we just kind of tinkered around with it and we play with a, a new yeast strain using the lager yeast on it and like the way it came out i think it helps kind of compared to the last the, the city slicker it's dried out a lot nicer so I, I, personally i feel it's a, a lot nicer <laughs> yeah what what style would you call it so, yeah, we've kind of just been going English lager. Uh, I've been telling people it's more of a traditional English lager. Yeah. Um, mm. But, yeah, and, and uh, apparently we wanted to brew that one first because we'd never brewed it before, and we were using a new system. So if we messed up on it, then nobody would know. <laughs> but um, I don't think they did. I think they did a tremendous job, and it tastes awesome. And it's been selling pretty well in the tap room. I'd say it's kind of a brownish copper color. Um, it's a... Uh, when you think lager, you don't think that color. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, it's it's got this real rich, robust maltiness to it. Yeah. It's it's super nice. Mm-hmm. Um, it is malty. You can smell. There's a little bit of roastiness on the nose. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a nuttiness. Yeah. To it. Yeah. It's very nutty, and that's it's okay. definitely my favorite beer that we make. Right now. A lot of people say toffee. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. I would say it, it's kind of mild on the toffee. It's not like a. Uh, like a Maybach or something, or you know, dark Bach beer or anything like that. But yeah, yeah there's a brewing company where the ales are lagers and the lagers are ales. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, at least you're in the right city now. <laughs> so One what? Thing what at a time. <laughs> it's actually what we're brewing today. <laughs> so what? What goes into this? Um, so that one, we're actually using a lot of English malts on it, and I think uh, I think our, mm. our the special kick that you get on it's uh, the caro wheat. Huh. That's where a lot of that rich caramel toffee flavor really comes through. And in the, in the, it's not about the hops, but what hops do you use? Uh, just all well I'm Huh. Okay. Yeah. Kind of a nice little uh, middle ground American style hop. And, and I'm assuming not a, not a whole lot on the back end? Or no, no. no. It's all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not dry off in the water. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that next. <laughs> not yet. That's in the special release. <laughs> um, Imperial version. <laughs> and, and, and you might have, did you say the yeast, the English yeast? Or? So that one, um, now we're just or it's using. it's a lager yeast, so. Yeah. Uh, right now we're using Safales. Uh, oh, I can't remember the code for it. But. <laughs> Pretty much their uh, staple mm. lager yeast on that the so sap, far. And that's, sap lager. Mm-hmm. It's really good. And like it, in the way that lager yeast has been doing. And it's, the, it, it, is this one filtered as well? It's, yep. it's bright and clean. Yep. And that one's it's actually much easier to filter than the Kolsch, surprisingly. <laughs> it's so, not as yeasty. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, Katie, you alluded, you alluded to it. Um, Y'all planned your grand opening at about the time the pandemic hit. <laughs> and so it was like, hey, we're going to be open. No, we're not going to be open. Well, that was actually like the cherry on top of a moving target <laughs> grand opening anyways. <laughs> our origin- When we broke ground on this spot in December of 2018, mm-hmm. we were like, We'll see you all here drinking beers in October of 2019. And then it was going to be November. And then it was going to be Christmas. And then it was for (laughs) sure going to be the middle of January. I was planning a big New Year's Eve party. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) How'd that go? (laughs) And then we... um, you know, God bless our landlord at the Rogers place because he, he was like, another 30 days? Yeah, yeah, another 30 days. <laughs> um, so, but we finally got out of there at the end. By the end of March, we were going to have, we were going to have an official, like, ribbon cutting on the 4th of April, but we were going to have, like, an April Fool's Day grand yeah. opening on the 1st of April we and just so, see. We were, we were so being clever. really funny. <laughs> and, uh, you know, St. Patrick's, <laughs> Patrick's Day came and all that stuff was canceled because of yeah. what, what's been going on. And it became pretty clear that that wasn't going to be the reality once again. So we were a little bit lucky in that we had a lot of work that needed to be done so we didn't have to move quick and do anything like lay people off or or immediately stop production because we were already in the middle of a move and had some planned downtime so Mm -hmm. on that hand that was wasn't too bad we got everything moved over Um, we took we even did some creative things like take over the cleaning contract from the contractor so that we could pay our own people to, uh. to, do, to do that work. And we opened up for curbside on the first instead of opening up to the public. So we had people coming in and, well, not really coming in, driving up, wanting, <laughs> wishing us well, hope, hoping to see the, see the building making plans to come in the community really showed up for us which was which was great funny enough to be perfectly candid like our our to-go sales here in bentonville were better than our being open in in our tap room in rogers so in a way that time in rogers conditioned us to be to for our business we Mm. we weren't a business who relied on our tap room sales to hold up the rest of it so we had a we had built those distribution lines and those supply channels and um, and all that. So, and, and some of that picked up a little bit, but of huh. course the restaurant side of things and the bars definitely didn't, doesn't make up for it, but we, we are still very lucky. So yeah. we're just glad that having the restaurant in here enabled us to, to have people come in and we could serve the restaurant customers beer and, and kind of operate that way. So, yeah. and I saw on uh, Facebook or somewhere that y'all are looking to hire people now so it sounds like things are starting to kind of look more positive yes they are they are um i feel like every day is you know a new goal to to be seen i mean it's it's been nice for us well we're very different than a lot of the other breweries around here just our situation everyone is different i mean everyone's unique but for us we operated at such um a low level we didn't have a lot of staff we've been such a small company for so long um we really don't hire people until we absolutely need to like we were like she said earlier we kind of grew out with the distribution and i'd have people coming to rogers and they'd be like yeah i've been drinking your beer for years but i didn't even know you guys were like had a brewery around here <laughs> like <laughs> they'd never been to our tap they they've gone to like accounts that we have but have been drinking and loving our beers for so long that um, and, and then they're like, I never even thought about coming to the tap room. We thought you guys were just like maybe distribution only. Uh-huh. I didn't even realize there was a tap room here. So with, uh, with us being open in, in such a, you know, prominent location, a visible location, I think people are like, oh, yeah, that's, that's the beer I've been drinking. That's awesome. Speaking of beer, how's that for a transition? Which, where should I go next? Uh, a porter and... Yeah. yeah. Although you would, it, it doesn't seem like you should go that way, 
our porter's like very it's like a very bare bones porter like very clean i'm sure i made you drink that four to five years ago because that <laughs> was my most favorite beer Until. And, and i say was because after <laughs> i had my second baby like my taste buds <laughs> changed and i became one of those ipa drinkers which i never was before i mean i drank it but that i would drink that porter like on a boat in 100 degree weather like all the time doesn't matter it was my favorite it looks like it's going to be like like thick and yeah. thick and uh, syrupy and yeah but it's not the mouthfeel is is nice and and um that's like my my taproom attendants are all, all the time it's like which way should i tell them to drink and i'm like I'd, I'd, I'd put the, the porter before anything like crazy hoppy. So it's got it's got it's got a, a lot of nice roast on the nose, but it's but the flavor, uh, you know, it's not overwhelming with the roast. Right. It's not like um, you know just grab reaching into the uh, grain bin and you know grabbing a bunch of uh, chocolate malt or something like that. But it is it is nice and 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 uh, roasty tasting, uh, but it's also kind of um, fruity as well. Which which go it's which lightens up the uh, the character of, yeah. of the beer. There's a lot. There's kind of a lot going on with it, but you don't. Like, I guess I don't know. It kind of just pops as you're drinking it. You, it's not quite what you'd expect. No, yeah. it's, it's good. So dark for a lot of people. If, yeah. if it were a different color, yeah. Yeah. then people we'd sell that in the summertime. Like, and people wouldn't even think twice about it. Like, <laughs> I mean, we still do, but not at the rate we sell all the beers. But. Like they, I was drinking like. You know, grabbed a beer out of the fridge and I just had a jacuzzi and thought I was drinking a porter for a second. I thought it was the amber I was drinking. <laughs> I was going to say, it, it, it tastes, if you were to close your eyes and taste it, uh, you would maybe think it tastes like an amber, mm-hmm. which is, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a mind trick. But it's good. So are we, are we talking like English-based malts? Or? So we've, there's been a few tweaks over the years with not so much the type of malt, but more the provider and we hit on one that we really liked. I'm trying to think if it was Simpsons or if it's Wireman. We might have gone a German route there to add a little twist to it. You can bring it up real fast. There's almost like a little, uh, like a dark cherry. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, it's just a really nice like kind of fruitiness underlaying a lot of the layers of it that kind of cuts through that, that roast that you would typically expect. Yeah. So you're not getting a lot of like the, the bitterness that you get from darker malts. You use kind of more of a, a I guess, lower roasted malts instead of like, or kind of more toasted malts, I guess, instead of highly roasted. Yeah. I I, I would see where where some uh, porter snobs might might ding it, you know, for being <laughs> out of the out of the category, out of the style guidelines. But you know, you're selling beer. You're not. Uh <laughs> we like. Specific, specifically style-wise, I would say it's a robust yeah. porter and mm. not like the more yeah. English. What's the other English yeah, porter? English um, it's not quite American. It's stronger. It's higher. It's higher in the ABV too. I think uh. like it's more. It blends those lines between a stout and a porter. I feel like a little bit more just because it's was six. It's six point three or six point two. Yeah. And yeah, but it's, it's a, just it, the color uh, is a wow. lot darker. Um, it's got, I don't know, robust seems like a great adjective for it. It's yeah. It's very nice. It, to say we're not always huge fans of the guidelines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be because I like awards and accolades, but. I just like good beer. Yeah. <laughs> but I also like good beer. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little tweak here, a little tweak there. No, it's good. It's very good. No, it's uh, also, yeah, it's going to be more of that chocolate wheat. That's what it is. I could see that. Now the um, so once you get your feet on the on the ground, what is the uh, what are the what are the plans for the future? I mean, what you know, you we've seen you evolve from you know a very small brewery uh, into you know this now is we can say is a, you know a twenty barrels that's a production brewery. You know, you guys are have the equipment to to go really big. What's your what are, your, what are your plans? Well, we've always seen ourselves as a production brewery. Even in the beginning, that was kind of part of the business plan. We wanted that having a nice tap room that first ended up being kind of a happy accident with some investors that we had. But um, we don't 
really see us becoming super large. We really think that local is the way to go. So we want to go really deep, close to home, instead of spreading ourselves really wide. I mean, we will go um, in our region, Arkansas is, but Arkansas is our market. We might, you might see us eventually, like, you know, in Tulsa, in Joplin, but you know, those places are closer to Northwest Arkansas than some places in Arkansas. So For sure. I consider that to be pretty close to home. We don't really want to set the world on fire. We just want to have like a really fun job and a really great place to work and make great beer. Um, I don't think we'd really, I mean, it'd be, it'd be cool to be making like 6,000 barrels a month eventually, like way down the road. We're just trying to hit, like, I think 200 barrels a month is our next benchmark. <laughs> so we got another bright tank and fermenter What's on the way. I, I don't share these goals at all. We're going to the uh, top of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, watch your back, anheuser Bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's good. It's, it's, it's going out there. It's going out there. <laughs> um, no. So... Yeah, we. I mean, we we see this as being our final. That was like a joke. Our, our I'm sorry. home. <laughs> so, so we'll grow into this. We we want to get a silo for some of our base malt so that we can get that in bulk and and we'll grow within this within this space and kind of see how it takes us from there. But uh, we, you know, I think that the beer market right now it's kind of trending local, maybe even hyper local. So to become I don't think it's really feasible, and or at least it's not our goals to become like a Sierra Nevada or like a New Belgium or anything of that size, even even a little bit. So, you know, that's kind of my answer to that. Well, so when it comes to growth, we got plenty of roof space. <laughs> <laughs> roof space. We're going up. <laughs> now, I'm I'm hoping this is the uh, is this the home record? It is the home record. Woo-hoo. I'm a big fan of the home record. So <laughs> talk God. talk about the home record, somebody. Whenever we have it. <laughs> I can talk about the shortage a little bit. Mm. Yeah, this is the home record. The home, home record, record IPA. <laughs> when we first started, we really thought that the City Slicker mm. Amber that Chris was talking about was going to be our flagship beer and that we were really like getting those early into craft beer drinkers hooked on that. And <laughs> it was very evident pretty quickly that the home wrecker was just going to be that it was going to take that place it's by far our best selling beer even though even though we have limitations in where we can sell it because of the high abv at seven and a half percent so it can't be in convenience or grocery stores and some other places with limited licenses it still outsells everything mm-hmm. by a pretty good margin so we're we're kind of the home wrecker brewery now. <laughs> Chris and Bo have been making. I, how much home wrecker home wrecker have you made? I think last year I was looking at our TTB reports and production for reports, and you guys made four beers, but by far like the most home wrecker. Yeah, it was like fifty percent yeah. like home wrecker, and then the other fifty percent like the other three beers. <laughs> well, the way to look at it is so we're on batch. I think 104 of Home Wrecker and the next top seller of beer, or next most produced beer would be Kolsch at 48 batches. And mm. that's not including, <laughs> so at the, at the previous location on the seven barrel system, we had some of these 40 barrel tanks. We could only feasibly fill them to 35 barrels. So we were, what, five brews? That we'd have to do to fill up a tank. So over the course of three days <laughs> to, to get that tank full. And we'd fill two of the 40s with home wrecker <laughs> for almost every month. There'd have to be two 40s of home wrecker full. And it, just like one, one of Kolsch that would last us maybe a month and a half, two months. <laughs> so the four is a little more uh, <laughs> misleading because, yeah, for about... 40 of those brews, it was five batches going into one. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's, yeah. That's a, that's a lot of... It gets to the point when we are low on a uh, home record, we're like, all right, and we 
tell all the employees, nobody drink home record. <laughs> and our, our distribution guy, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> he'll, he'll be like, I will, I'll post a picture on social media. He's like, what the hell are you doing drinking home wrecker <laughs> at this <laughs> other, at, at Beef O'Brady's? I told you not to be drinking that because <laughs> we're trying to save it for the customers. <laughs> well, it's, it's a really good beer. And, yeah. you know, I, you know. So hopefully those problems are behind us now. There, there for a while people were tweeting, you know, oh, I'm so sick of IPAs. You know, everywhere I go, there's tons of IPAs and no other style. So sick of IPAs. But, you know, the evidence is that it's good and people like it. So, yeah. I do want to add, that beer is not brewed with love. I <laughs> just want to thank all of our cussers for making us work that much harder to produce that beer. So, so, so talk about that. I mean, you know, you know the home brewers are going to want to brew something similar. Yeah. So talk about the keys to making a good IPA like so, this. So what we've kind of hit on is, I mean, going with the balance of both, I guess, the, the alcohol and the dryness and the touch of sweetness that it'll provide and the, the IBUs and the bitter herb. I guess uh, trying to avoid a lot of the bitterness of the hops, but the IBUs that they'll will be provided to balance out pretty much around the same, and it seems to be like a that almost one tenth scale or it's seven point five percent to about seventy five eighty IBU range. Is, I don't know. It just seems to work out with a lot of beers. Mm. It's worked out with our with the home wrecker. I'm thinking of like High Lie. It's very similar in a lot of those styles that I think like really too hearted. Too hearted. Oh, oh, too hearted. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, it's, it's balanced by a lot of sweetness from the malt, too, that it really underlies it, so it gives it that nice backbone to carry a lot of the heft, so you're not going to hit by the alcohol or the hops at once, and it's just all three kind of harmonizing together, yeah. bring a lot of balance to it. If you've never had our, our <laughs> home record before, I, I like to tell people it's like a, it's like a Colorado two-hearted. Um, huh. So, so it's, it's, it's got that same kind of, like, uh, profile that you'd, you'd see in, like, a Bell's, but, like, has that, like, uh, that, that maltiness, that, that flair that a Colorado IPA has. Kind of like an Oscar Blues blended with a, or... Uh, Odell. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, so what's, I mean, it is, there is a sweetness in there, but it, obviously it's not cloyingly sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so are there some crystal malts in there? To there get are. The, there's, um... So the one I think that really drives that one home is caramel, which is really underutilized, kind of flies under the radar for a lot of people. We kind of avoid, you know, a lot of, you know, I think the, like, I don't know why I'm, <laughs> the recipes are just so, like, rote memory now. It's like, all right, I know by this by just sight, I don't have to think about it anymore. It's like my grandma's cookies. <laughs> yeah, instead of, like, Crystal 60 or something like that, we went for caramel or, you know, kind of something that's lighter in color, but it brings so much, like, flavor richness of that malt and it's, it's always one of my favorite to like as we're grinding it take some of the kernels crack it open because it's just like you know it's, it looks like pure just crystal inside there mm. this nice sheen inside and it's just candy to pop in your mouth and talk about the hops uh, one that carries that one through it's gonna be citra for sure Ooh. in the back end but uh other than that it's nothing <clears throat> nothing too wild it's a lot of your basic American hops that, you know, it's just a matter of when and how much, I guess. You know, you're getting your ratios in. So lot, lots lots at the end of the boil yeah, and then yeah. lot, and then lots dry hopping as well? Is that yep. just basically it? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> like, nothing really at the front of it in the first, what, 50, 45 minutes? 40 minutes or so? Oh, wow. Just letting it go. Just real hard boil. Really kind of get a lot of a... Uh, Caramelization, I guess, going on. Which mm-hmm. is one change with the, the steam system now. Direct fire doesn't get as much of that that intense heat underneath it. Ah. So now this is more more spread around. It's not going to get over the boiling point. You know, we're kind of maintaining that. We we're kind of not sure about how that might, especially with home wrecker, how that might affect the flavor going forward. Are we going to lose some of that richness and depth? But I think it's, I think it's holding up so far. Hmm. I will say with the new system, I've seen Bo and Chris running to a lot less um, <laughs> <laughs> with overboils and whatnot. And there's probably a control panel or something you can look yeah. at and <laughs> it's, push it's, a button every oh now yeah. and then rather than. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> we even have we've got a rake in there now, so it's not you know one person. Stick, 
<laughs> dumping stuff in with a pitcher and a trash can, and one person <laughs> stirring with a paddle. <laughs> we, can, we can do a lot more things. And, and I'm assuming it's an American ale yeast? Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very, I, I, could, I could drink that all day. Yeah. We're doing a little bit of filtration on that, too, as well. Yeah. We were, we're starting to, we just did our first filter run on it. It's, very, it's much coarse, yeah. much more coarse filtration. I was going to say, does does the filtration? Do you risk bringing out or taking away some of that hoppy so goodness? That's, yeah, that's always been our worry, but we're we're just we're kind of sticking to coarse filtration on almost everything. Um, <laughs> the uh, more of the worries how how the filter is actually going to hold up oh. to the hops. <laughs> <laughs> Which, again, I, I still think. The Kolsch is going to take the cake on, on being the biggest pain. It's just <laughs> so yeasty. Like, didn't it, it take not drop out. Didn't it take you like two days to filter this last batch? Oh, my God. We had to break it up into t- two filter runs. Wow. <laughs> Which works for, for our production end. So there's a, there's a beer that's kind of in... Uh, it, it's weird because it's in demand, but it's still in development, apparently. And this is the... <laughs> mm. Do you want to talk about the Space Goose? We can talk about the Space Goose. It's <laughs> in development for years. We never because stopped improving. We, yes, mm. right. Constant improvement. Well, mm. we wanted to get something to market pretty quick. I mean, we try to keep a nice balance of quality beer being produced on a recipe end, but also there is, like, the whole fact that we're a business that... It's supposed to be making money <laughs> to pay employees. So we try to come up with stuff that people will really like. And so we had a lot of demand for a hazy IPA or a New England style IPA. And this is the final rendition. We started doing some hazies. The first was kind of, we called it the bandwagon for probably obvious reasons. Um, and, and, we decided, and then um, after doing that a few times, we had Here's the thing about the bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't actually hazy. <laughs> well, it was at first. But it was never it hazy would, enough. It would, it would drop out after like the second day or something. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it was... So, so we, it is in development, yes, but, it's, but this is much further in development. <laughs> I, will, I will say like in the tap room since we've been open, like it's been our... It's been out selling home record and Kolsch. Oh, yeah, Space Ghost, and it's been flying off the shelves at all our accounts. Like we've been just, it's, it's been kind of shocking uh, to see how, what people are uh, like. Everybody comes in asking about it. We've kind of with our you know social media accounts and stuff like that. We've been pushing it, but uh, people come in, they try it, and they love it. So um, well, well, the sample that you poured for me, you said you, y'all said you didn't like the look of it, but. You know, I don't know what you're shooting for, but it tastes great. So, I mean, it's super juicy, um, and it's you know the sample I've got is 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 hazy. Um, so I don't know, you know, I don't know anything to ding it about because I don't know what your expectations are. But it but it is delicious. <laughs> Our expectations are very high, <laughs> but uh, it's um, it is it is a really good beer. We're very happy with. It and it's a combination of a lot of the things. We've got an excellent recipe, and we finally got the haze to stay, so we don't have to worry about that dropping out after a certain amount of time. So that's that's been figured out, and um, we have really cool packaging too, which is really <laughs> important. So we actually, um, it's got like this cool like galaxy thing going on, and then there is a like a derpy looking goose on there that one of our <laughs> tap room employees actually doodled while she was working and so we used her art and put the goose on the carrier and all the labels and it's pretty cool but um it's one of the reasons it's so popular is it's because it's super approachable so it's a hazy ipa but because of the juiciness and that the hops aren't so bitter and you're getting a lot of just the flavor and aroma from them and and not the bitterness a lot of people even some people who come in insisting that they don't want a beer end up liking it yeah. so um, that's one of the things that i i think that's pretty successful so it's kind of like a summer ipa like if, for mm. people who don't like ipas in the summer i mean it's 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 super juicy super drinkable uh crushable it's um it's a fun beer and like 
everything about his phone. So like we wanted to rename it because the original name was Bandwagon, and we saw about <laughs> you know. Um, Probably predictably, we saw about 15 beers named Bandwagon's uh, 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 New England IPA because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so we actually had, we kind of had like a little naming contest within the uh, employees at the company. And uh, I think uh, Chris was just on a random word generator and, and Space Goose popped up. <laughs> so we had, we had a few finalists, but a Space Goose won out and then. Uh, and then again, we had a, a, one of our employees doodle the, the goose, and then we've created a backstory, and we have some animations on YouTube, and uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're hoping to do some fun stuff with that. So the, talk about the hopping strategy. There's a few styles that we're coming to learn now, or it's with, with the hazy IPAs and uh, even with some, some of the uh, trials that we've done with the, what was it, the uh, seltzer, trying the hard oh, seltzer. It's yeah. like, these, these styles shouldn't be this hard. But then when you start getting into it, it's like, oh, okay. none of this really makes sense. I don't <laughs> like <laughs> a lot of this fun. stuff that yeah, a lot of this stuff that you're you've spent a lot of ex- like time and experience with that you're now pushing aside to figure out some other methods. <laughs> it's like okay, this is a whole new world of things to figure out while we're okay. You spend a lot of your career trying to make like clear beers. <laughs> Like really <laughs> bright, like clear <laughs> beers. And now we're like we have the two yeah. extremes of it. Like one that's totally clear, still technically a, I guess, <laughs> beer with the hard seltzer, and then one that's just almost mud. <laughs> is the, the hazy IPAs <laughs> and dialing that in. Yeah, we got to keep this stable. <laughs> And shelf stable and the haze stable for a long time and still taste good and not gritty or yeasty. So the haze isn't coming from the yeast. All right, what, where is it coming from now? It just goes down the whole path and, yeah, and you get into a lot of, <laughs> a lot of very strange chemistry going on. Or, so so uh, is it, do you do, is it one of these beers where, like hardly any hops are in the boil, and all, everything is yep. like post boil. Everything's post boil. Wow. Just, yep. So that's it's, another rule that you. Got. Yep. <laughs> it's, you got to throw out the window. Yep. And it's a lot of hops. <laughs> Chris may be having an especially hard time with this because he's like not our IPA guy. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a lot of time starting to stay away from him. I, I'm so happy to get back together with y'all because, uh, you know, I drink your beers and I've been following your progress and I've been, you know, seeing all these pictures of the be- this beautiful building coming up and, you know, just waiting to come up and, and experiencing it. And I'm so happy that, that you're finally in here. Thank so you. I can't wait. Uh, you know, maybe maybe it won't be four or five years till we talk again. But I hope not. <laughs> hope once all this crazy stuff settles down, we start seeing our Fayetteville friends a lot more often. Yeah, I hear you. All right, y'all. Well, Katie and Chris and Steve, thanks a lot. Well, thanks again to Katie, Steve, and Chris. I talked to Bo afterwards, who was uh, busy brewing beer while we were talking about it and drinking it. <laughs> Somebody's got to work. <laughs> uh, I'm really happy that they're back home in Bentonville in that great space. If you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to say howdy, write to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form on basicbrewing.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Check out our mobile-friendly shop at basicbrewingshop.com. Thanks to everybody supporting us through our Patreon page, Special goodies coming your way. Check that out at patreon.com slash basic brewing. It's all until next time. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer. Production help for Basic Brewing Radio and our website is provided by Kelly Dots. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voice, and we'll talk to you next time, everybody. In the meantime, stay well and stay tuned. So long. <laughs> <laughs>